In my hands, I'm holding the world's fastest gaming CPU, the Ryzen 9 9950 X3D, and it is an absolute monster. But stock performance isn't enough for me. So in this video, we're optimizing and overclocking this CPU to the limit to find out how much FPS it can actually get before the whole system becomes unstable. However, in order to get max FPS with the world's fastest CPU, simply putting it into my old gaming PC is just not going to be enough. It will get bottlenecked, so I decided to build a brand new gaming PC designed for one specific goal, getting the highest possible FPS. I upgraded the motherboard, switched to water cooling, and dropped in $950 worth of RAM along with an RTX 4080, all in a pretty cool case. I'm not gonna lie, this video cost me way too much money. With all that out of the way, let's see just how much FPS this CPU can pump out without any optimizations or overclocking. In this Fortnite FPS test map, we're peaking at 1113 FPS using the DX12 performance mode. But if we switch it over to the older DX11 performance mode, the highest frame rate I'm seeing on the overlay is significantly higher at 1255. Now obviously we won't be hitting this much FPS in a game of Battle Royale or Reload, but this video is about getting the highest FPS, so that's why we're using this map. That's also why we're going to be using DX11 as well. I normally play on DX12 because it's more stable, but DX11 still wins when it comes to raw FPS. So here are the goals for this challenge. First, we're going to try and increase the peak frame rate of 1255 on the overlay all the way up to 1400 FPS. That would be about an 11.6% increase. At the same time, we're going to take the in-game FPS counter from peaking at 1370 all the way up to 1500, about a 9.5% FPS increase increase. But just before we start changing anything, there's just one rule for this challenge. I am not allowed to lower the in-game settings or resolution. The only things I am allowed to do are system optimization outside of the game. Cause look, if I just switched to 1080p, we'd already have 1400 FPS and the video would be over in two minutes. No one's trying to watch a two minute video of Electron switching from 1440p to 1080p. I know these goals might sound out of reach since I'm not able to decrease the in-game settings any further, but with stock Windows 11 being as bloated as it is, you might be surprised at the insane results we get at the end. Starting with debloating Windows 11. Windows 11 comes pre-installed with a ton of bloat and spying software, so it's crucial that we debloat the system as much as we can before before we move on to the next optimizations. I'm using Chris Titus tech software for this because it makes the entire process much quicker. With the tweaks now finished, I'm just going to restart my PC and hopefully we come back with some more frames. Unfortunately though, my frame rates across the board were more or less about the same, though I was not surprised. This is because like most games, Fortnite only really uses up to 8 cores. And with 16 cores on the CPU, the other 8 were already running the background processes with basically no issues. So we don't really see a difference at all in gaming performance just yet. Hopefully the next optimization improves our numbers, because otherwise we're never going to reach 1400 FPS. So of course, I had to disable core isolation. Doing this is basically free FPS every time, and just by making this one change, it boosted our FPS. With core isolation off, we peaked at 1273 FPS on this overlay, and the in-game FPS counter is now peaking above 1300 very consistently. So after those basic Windows tweaks, we went from peaking at 1255 FPS to 1273. It's a step forward, but to be honest, we probably should have made more progress by now. And we're still over 100 FPS off of both the final targets. So let's try some registry editor tweaks, which are usually some of the most effective optimizations you can do to your PC. So I'm just going to set scheduling category to high and set system responsiveness to 10. And after I restarted my PC again, this time we're getting up to 1297 FPS on the overlay. And we peaked at 1400 FPS on the up arrow. And just like that, we're pretty much within 100 FPS of both our goals. Next, we're going to move on to Win32 priority separation. Now you might be wondering why I didn't just bundle this up with the last two, but the best number to set here highly depends on your specific PC. I have a general idea of which values are good, but there's only one way to truly know which one is best for my computer, and it's to actually test a few. With a default value of 2, we were getting up to 1297, but when I tried changing it to 26 hexadecimal, which was the best value for me on my previous system, my frame rate actually got worse. It's peaking at 1270 now, but I was a eventually able to find the best value for the system, and with 24 hex, we managed to peak at 1326 on the overlay, and the in-game counter is frequently 1400 on the highs. Now that Windows 11 is mostly optimized, it's time to get into the BIOS where we're going to unlock even more performance. The first thing I wanted to try in here was the X3D Turbo Mode. I've never had an X3D CPU, so this new option I've never seen before seemed intriguing, and they claim that it can boost gaming performance by up to 18%, but let's just say that was not the case for me. We went from peaking at 1326 to 1331, which is not even a 0.4% increase and could honestly just be margin of error. 
I obviously couldn't see a difference with the in-game counter either because again, it is such a tiny difference. With that being said, I will not continue to use X3D Turbo Mode for the rest of this video as it reduces my CPU to what is essentially an 8-core, 8 8-thread 8 CPU for 0.4% more FPS. So I'm just going to turn that off and try to gain FPS in other ways instead. But since I'm back in Windows again, I thought I might as well try some GPU optimizations, more specifically in the NVIDIA control panel. You might be rolling your eyes at this because Fortnite is mostly a CPU intensive game, but when you uncap your FPS like this, your GPU still has to do something. So I essentially just copied my exact same settings from my own video, and by doing this, I was able to peak at 1345 on the overlay, and we're hitting 1400 FPS on the up arrow even more frequently. But though we're getting closer to our targets, we're still falling short. So it's time to get back into the BIOS. Going back into the BIOS, it's time to turn on PBO, or Precision Boost Overdrive. We'll get into advanced mode later if we need to, but by simply changing that setting from auto to enabled, we just reached a new record high on both the overlay and the in-game counter, with 1382 on the overlay and 1499 on the up arrow. Being just one FPS away from one of our goals, I continued by disabling SMT in the BIOS. Sadly though, I couldn't beat my personal best on the overlay, but I hit 1506 on the up arrow for the very first time. But just like having X3D turbo mode on, having SMT off will tank my productivity. As you can see, it reduces our CPU from a 16 core 32 thread CPU to a 16 core 16 thread. So I'm going to re-enable it and increase my frame rate using advanced PBO instead. At this point, we hit one of the end goals, but we need to hit both at the same time to complete this challenge. We've done most of the basic tweaks that we could have possibly done, so if we're gonna hit 1400, we need to do some advanced tuning. So I set PBO to advanced, switched PBO scaler control to manual, changed the scaler to 10x, set the CPU boost clock override to positive, and increased my max CPU boost clock override to 200. And with these settings, our peak frame rate on the overlay is down to 1339. Now you might assume that this was an absolute fail because my CPU is literally just running a bit hotter with no real improvement. But that's because we're not done yet. You have to trust the process because this is only the first part of advanced CPU overclocking. So I went back into the PBO settings and entered the curve optimizer settings. And in here, I set it to negative 20 for the cores that have the Vcache. And this simple change somewhat made up for the FPS lost, but still only peaks at 1366, which we were already past before we started doing advanced PBO. Eventually, I realized that I could actually set my curve optimizer to minus 20 for all the cores, including the ones that don't have the vcache, by just typing in the number. So I reran the test with all the cores at minus 20, and surprisingly, curve optimizer on all the cores works noticeably better. We peaked at 1380, though on average, it still is a little bit worse than when we first started changing the advanced PBO settings. And our up arrow peak still doesn't go above 1483, whereas we did go above 1500 earlier. But that's completely fine, because we had yet to do the final step. And by simply Simply adjusting the curve shaper, we finally achieved both of the goals we set at the beginning of the video. 1400 FPS on the overlay and peaking at 1500 on the in-game counter. It really goes to show just how much performance you're leaving on the table if you don't optimize your PC, even with the fastest gaming CPU in the world. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, you'll probably enjoy this one where I bought Nvidia's $4400 graphics card from 2010, so watch this video next.